how can we define political Speaker, expansionism? the progress towards deep so global political political right. expansionism has so far benefited the U.S. Hello everyone, welcome to the Beyond 7 Minutes podcast. Our special guest today, which is the YD Senator Raf Ali Barazi, the Okayu Senator to the Dewan Rakyat. My name is Adura and I will be your host for today. So, a bit of introduction. The YD Senator Ras Adiva is a well-respected figure in, the, in, the, in Malaysian broadcasting and a top Malaysian fellow athlete. He is the co-founder and president of Okio Center, which aims to empower, educate, and inspire disabled persons. On, on 20th May 2020, Ras Adiva was appointed to represent the person with disabilities in the House of Senate, Dewan Negara, for a term of three years. On 23 November 2020, she became the first woman to chair the Malaysian National News Agency, Bernama, and was previously well-respected news presenter and TV host for NTV3 and NTV7. Ras Adipa has a TEDx talk title, I Will It, genuinely and such an inspiring and impactful speech, speech and eye-opener for all. So uh, my name is Adura. I am a second year, second semester student at the University of International um, uh, at the International Islamic University Malaysia in the Kuda of Economics. So I study economics and I am also a student with disability. So starting our conversation with YB Senator, a few of the questions related to general discussions regarding ableism, which is the discrimination of and social prejudice against people with disabilities based on the belief and particular disabilities. Uh, based on the belief that particular disabilities are superior. At its heart, ableism is noted in the assumption that, that people with disabilities require fixing and defines people by their disability. So, uh, in short, ableism is fundamentally about contempt, not hate or indif uh, indifference. It includes harmful stereotypes, misconceptions, and general generalizations. So we can see that it is the best interest, it is our best interest to challenge and eradicate ableism. So my first question to you, uh, Madam Senator, um, do you think the perception towards ableism in Malaysia is an internalized issue or an institutional issue or, the, or, or a little bit of both? So is it related to social, cultural, or, or is it a bit more of an uh, structural issue which is more institutionalized? So can you answer that for us? Yeah, Assalamualaikum, Madura. Thanks everyone for inviting me. Um, ableism, especially towards persons with disability, um, is an, is a worldwide problem. Uh, I think it boils down to people's attitude on how um, they perceive persons with disabilities. Mostly they do not understand us. Here in Malaysia, under the Welfare Department or Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat, we have um, seven categories and uh, now, um, a bigger category, which is the rare disease. So, um, understanding is very important in order for us to stop people's, uh, you know, negative thinking towards us. Um, able body doesn't understand the needs of persons with disability. You can't blame them because uh, they were not exposed to it. They were not taught about it in school. Um, so, I encourage, um, and I'm working very closely with the different different agencies, so as um, especially uh, the education ministry, so as uh, we could um, have classes on disability equality training um, and make people understand the different different uh, disabled categories and how um, we uh, must um, embrace them in the community as we are part of the community and how is um, and how best uh, we can uh, support persons with disabilities so as we do not discriminate. So the most important thing is actually to, um, uh, you know, adjust the way we think and uh, make people understand there is no point of us getting angry, getting upset, uh, why people treat us like this, why people treat us like that. Um, the best thing to do is to educate people and make them understand. Uh, usually it's because they don't understand. That's why they feel, um, you know, they have the right to make comments towards us. They have the right to think as such towards us and look down. Uh, we are part of the society, we are part of the world's population under WHO and the United Nations. 15% of a country's population is actually disabled, which means that in Malaysia, that's about 4.7 million. I give you an example. Right now, we are talking. You do not have a sign language interpreter. So that's discrimination in itself. 
because we feel that there is no need. We don't realize that there are a lot of people out there, close to 50,000 people out there in the country um, uh, who needs assistance with sign language interpreters or having closed captions. So yeah, this is a learning process for everybody, uh, especially for um, um, people who are doing web interviews so that when you invite and talk about somebody uh, or a subject on disability, please make sure that you have a sign language interpreter. Otherwise, there's no point for us talking because we are already discriminating people. Thank you, Madam Senator. I totally agree with you on the need for, especially um, on the on the increasing and the increasing bigger categories for for persons with disabilities, which includes uh, those with rare diseases or invisible disabilities because um, we have we always have that stereotype where people persons with disabilities need to have a certain support in terms like a walking cane or a, or a wheelchair or a, a white a white cane and everything in which that I myself have faced, have faced that sort of discrimination like whenever I am not using my my cane people will be like oh you don't okay so it's very in in a sense I'm still half paralyzed and I am still very much um, in, I'm still very much disabled, but just because I'm not using any support, am I less disabled than I'm using more? So, so, and also another thing about uh, having more, um, more, uh, let's say, uh, more intermediaries um, to to make sure that that our society is more inclusive, such as so. Um, but uh, but Madam Senator, I would I would like to ask more in terms of the the categories for rare diseases and. And invisible illnesses. How do um, how do the Ministry of Health or GKM um, actually categorize those people who have rare diseases or or invisible illnesses into such uh, into those categories to make sure that they that they get that they get the best care that they need? Because right now at the moment we see that even even Jawatan Kebajikan Malaysia registration is very hard to get for the OTU card itself. Thank you for your question. Um, okay, to register under the Welfare Department or Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat at the moment is uh, a, a slight tough at the moment because uh, not everybody's back to work and everybody's rotating. So I ask all friends out there who are registering uh, with the Welfare Ministry to um, be um, a bit patient. Um, by 2021, inshallah, everything will be back again, um, meaning it's easier to register. Um, that's one. Second thing is your question about persons with disability under the rare disease uh, category. There are seven thousand different seven thousand different uh, rare diseases in the world. So um, a lot of countries, um, most countries actually, do not know of the many many categories because there's just a lot. So I always tell people just because you don't see it, it doesn't mean that it isn't there. Sungguh pun kita tidak nampak tidak semestinya ia tiada. So um, um, at the moment, uh, for the rare diseases, um, they also um, have categories which is per bagai. And then uh, for the ones who have difficulties in moving, then we would put it under physical. Uh, the ones who uh, have uh, hearing or deaf impairment, uh, deaf and blind, and sometimes they are deaf and blind at the same time, that one we put under per bagai. Um, I have to be very, very honest with you. Um, I do not want to speak on behalf of the health ministry, but I can um, tell you right now that um, even the welfare uh, department is having um, a, a lot of, um, it is working very closely with the medical fraternity to understand a lot more of the 7,000 different diseases. Uh, it's a lot, um, but I ask all my friends, uh, I ask them not to give up, um, to keep on highlighting and um, educating the mass. Um, like I said, even uh, people who are medical practitioners um, are still learning because uh, the, the reason that they are not able to um, pinpoint exactly uh, which category are these rare diseases is because, also because um, um, most of my friends out there are not coming out. So um, I um, encourage parents to bring out the children with rare diseases um, in the open so as we can educate people more. Um, their needs are different and um, some of them needs to go to hospital and take injections which cost a million or two million in a year. And the government is supporting, um, but you know, um, a lot more needs to be done 
And um, the only way for us to do that is first, if we register ourselves with the welfare ministry. Right now, our registration is about 590,000 uh, OKUs uh, as compared to the, the, um, you know, the, the um, uh, number that uh, is supposed, that we are supposed to have in the country, which is 4.7, 4.7 million. The one that's registered is 590,000. So we have a long way to go. So JKM, uh, the welfare department is doing their very best to go down to, um, you know, the, to, to the people, especially in rural areas, to make sure that uh, we have our friends who are disabled uh, come out and register. If only then we would know how much, uh, how many, how, how much is needed for us to support them and how many of them out there uh, with different, different categories, with special needs. So I encourage all our friends out there to come out. And I apologize on behalf of the welfare ministry uh, for not um, being able to register them as fast as they can, uh, as fast as they would, uh, because of the current situation, that's uh, the pandemic that's in our whole country. So uh, be patient, but we're, we're getting there. Thank you for your comments, Madam Senator. Um, just a note to the viewers um, regarding invisible illnesses and rare diseases. One of my friends who had uh, who had them was told uh, was told by the doctors and medical practitioners that she has been lying when when she asked to get diagnosed. So it, it's it's quite it's a it's a very challenging thing for for Malaysians, especially to get diagnosed for rare diseases and. Uh, for rare diseases and invisible uh, and invisible illnesses right now. So, uh, Madam Senators, uh, Madam Senators' work has been uh, a very comment uh, a very commendable in terms of making this work to doubt and 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 to and to uh, and to disregard the the stereotype that has been going on um, for for the last for the last century on this on this issue. So, as we move on to uh, moving on to the next the, to the next question on on education. So according to news sources, um, you have um, they, they've been saying that you have plans of introducing sign language as a third language to students as young as those in nursery school and even to those in tertiary institutions, as we have also in, in the university. So what what are your aims behind this initiative? Okay, well, um I have a, a, a stepsister who's deaf, so I grew up with someone who's not able to hear and who have been in very, very frustrating situations. Um, not just at home, because you know there are some signs that we don't really understand, but more of are outside. So there's a lot of discrimination towards persons who are deaf or hearing impaired. So um, I suggested this because we um, sign language is another way for us to speak, you know, moving, um, uh, moving our hands, um, gestures, um, you know, to, to, to make sure that we can communicate so that there is no space, there is no, uh, jurang. so for me, it's very, very important that we push sign language as a third language, um, because once you start teaching children from um, primary, secondary and universities, um, as they grow up, they realize that, you know, there's some of uh, others, there's some others who um, they can communicate with. So, you know, because we need to teach children um, about not discriminating uh, persons with disabilities, okay, use. So once they are able to communicate, then it's easier, you know, the, the world will be um, a much friendlier place to live in because we can communicate. It's just like communicating in, in, in Arabic, in Japanese, in French, in German, in Mandarin, you know, Indian, uh, Tamil. So, you know, it's it's a matter of learning um, a new a new language. So sign language is actually another language, except you don't speak but you sign. Uh, not everybody who's deaf is able to lip read, so it's very important that we um, have closed caption, and it's very important for us to sign. And also, when they come out, um, right now the deaf who are registered is about fifty thousand in Malaysia, so. It's going to increase. Um, just to share with you, in 2030, the aging population is reaching its, you know, it's it's exploding. So, um, um, doing things for disabled people, accessibility, understanding, um, giving support, all this uh, is vital, not just for us, but also for the elderly. 
um, you know, the elders uh, need or things as how we need right now. And eventually everybody will become disabled. So sign language is a wonderful way for us to communicate and, and understand one another. One second, it's another way for us to find jobs, you know, as sign language interpreters. So, you know, if all else fails, you know, you have other skills and sign language skill is the skill to, is the, a, a great skill to have because then you can interpret for, say for example, talks for events, um, uh, for, for, for jobs, you know, and even for news and TV programs. So it's very, very important. Um, I, I, I will push, I'll keep on pushing for this because I do not want us to um, get complaints from people who are deaf that they're not able to understand. It's 2021 and everything is using, the technology is, is amazing. So, you know, we do not have an excuse. And recently the uh, uh, minister, Saifuddin, yang Hormat Saifuddin, um, the minister of um, uh, KKMN, Kementerian Komunikasi and Multimedia, um, he has uh, appointed an officer um, who signs, uh, a special officer who signs, he's an able body, so he's able to do that. So, you know, that is wonderful. And I actually, um, you know, uh, uh, support and applaud uh, ministers and of different ministries to have officers who's able to communicate um, with the families. Thank you, Madam Senator. Really, really like the the, the note on the, the note on the um, on 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 introducing sign language will help facilitate long term awareness of the different of the of the disabled community and accessibility in Malaysia. So, a follow up question to that is that. What change can we look forward to in the future? Do you think a change at this level will have an impact on the education system as a whole? I mean, like because we're starting off with the sign language. So what, what more change are you are you hoping to implement in the education system to facilitate the, the interaction between uh, non-disabled people and disabled people? Okay, I think um, the most important thing right now is to make sure that our teachers and our carers um, uh, trainers um, are equipped with uh, new um, tools, uh, are equipped with uh, how best uh, to care for uh, the different categories of persons with disabilities, like autism, dyslexic, um, ADHD, um, uh, and, and educate um, them on um, how um, to understand better and, and, and how to, um, to treat uh, students uh, PWD students with special needs uh, better. So um, in order for us to grow, in order for us to, um, to, to support uh, PWDs in our country, education is the utmost. So um, teachers must be equipped uh, with the tools that they need. Teachers must be sent for courses and for training. They need to uh, constantly um, you know, improve and, and you know, uh, sharpen the skills um, and the uh, third one is facilities for persons with disabilities in school uh, from PDK Pusat Dalam Community, you know, um, to uh, Tadika, you know, and um, also to, um, for, sorry, from Tadika to PDKs and then to uh, other special schools like, um, you know, schools for those different, different um, <coughs> categories. <coughs> so now under um, OKU Pembelajaran, um, I think it's very, very important for us to have more trainers and teachers because um, it's like um, one teacher to maybe three to four students. So we don't have enough of that. Um, I have heard reports of mm -hmm. some teachers being sent to um, uh, Skola Has or Plus Plus Has because uh, you know the teachers are not up to par or just not good enough or if somebody doesn't like the teacher. And that shouldn't be the way. Teachers who come and teach children with special needs, uh, the class class has, the scholar scholar has, um, guru guru ini, these teachers um, are the ones that you uh, should be respecting more because they know how to teach um, you know, other things, but they have an extra skill. And mind you, not everybody is able to have the patience at all. And not everybody is able to, um, um, you know, um, to have, the special needs children like them. Um, you either have it or you don't. You know, it's like 
cats, uh, animals, they, you know, if they like you, they like you. If they feel uh, you are a bit uh, weird or you are very strict or you don't like animals, say for example, then they know, they, they have the instinct. So same thing with us uh, who are disabled, uh, yourself as well, you know, um, same thing with, uh, you know, our special needs children. Um, they want a teacher who's loving, but a teacher who's also willing to, to um, make them learn new things and a teacher who has patience with them. Uh, not all teachers have that in them. So to all of you out there and to the different, different organization or associations or uh, units who are listening to me, let me tell you something. And to all the teachers out there, do not allow anyone to tell you you're not good. That's why they're sending you to special classes, special to, to treat uh, and, and also to educate the teachers for special needs. Do not allow them to do that because you are better than that. Uh, to all the teachers out there who's been teaching my people and I, I just would like to say thank you so very much. Uh, to all the lecturers out there who's very patient at universities and colleges, patient, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to care and uh, to want to educate us. Uh, I have friends who, uh, uh, like a friend of mine in Penang, she is a CP, cerebral palsy, and she has a master's degree. She comes out, people don't want to give her a job and she could teach, but because of uh, she has difficulty in, in, in um, uh, say for example, speaking because she's learned, she speaks slowly, so she's not allowed to do anything. So yeah, <clears throat> that <clears throat> notion has to change as well. So to all the teachers out there who has been teaching my people and I, I just want to say you guys rock and that we love you very much. It takes a lot of skill, courage and patience um, and empathy, um, you know, to, to, to do what you do. So please don't allow anyone to say otherwise of you. Thank you, Madam Senator. Well, uh, to the viewers, with uh, the people, people with disabilities have had a shortage of, of teachers specializing in teaching students with disabilities since forever, if I'm not mistaken. So, so that's something that that we we hope that that the authorities are able to to curb. Especially with um, further uh, future educators out there, if you if you would like, um, it would be it would be commendable if you if you show yourself if you are interested in in this field. So um, yeah, just try it out, and you'll see that they're, they're fine. <laughs> so um, moving on to the next question. So the, the future of inclusivity in global environment. So one of the main criteria in determining in determining whether a city is disabled friendly is accessibility of public transportation and ease of access to hotels and public attractions. So do you think our cities have thus far have been accessible and friendly towards PWDs? Yeah, I have to be very, very honest. It might not come out well. Some people might not like what I say. <laughs> but um um, Malaysia has come a long way. We have improved here and there. Um, uh, there is the accessibility, you know, but it's still not good enough. It takes a long time. Uh, but in order for us to do that again, we need to educate the public and the agencies involved, the ministries involved, why we need, why we need what we need. <clears throat> and uh, KPKT. Uh, Kementerian Perumahan Kerajaan Tempatan, um, even um, uh, and, and also the PBT, uh, they, they, they need to work harder, faster, uh, because if we are going to receive the, um, um, the influx of, of, of um, um, aging population in 2030, um, if we, if, you know, if, if we, we're not doing a lot of things right now to improve the facilities, the accessibility uh, for PWDs, uh, then in 2020, a lot of people will suffer. So I am working, you know, constantly uh, lobbying and um, creating awareness on, on why we need what we need. I give an example, there's some ramps which are very steep. You go on them, uh, you can't push yourself up. And you can't even come down because if you go down the ramp, it's like a slope. 
like Kilimanjaro, you fall, you die. So little things like that, you know, people need to follow the specs. So uh, um, Javatan Standard Malaysia, um, they have worked very, very closely, um, you know, with uh, building owners. Uh, but again, there is no pengakwasaan. So what, when there is uh, no ruling, when there is no uh, saying, you know, when there is no act that says that you, know, you should be doing this, um, you know, uh, when people just approve buildings without checking whether there are accessible facilities, when people take things lightly um, with uh, basic uh, infras, then we uh, will not be able to reach an accessible um, country, or at least um, a half accessible country by 2030. So um, right now, um, to your question, no, Malaysia is um, um, slowly but surely, Malaysia is improving the facilities in the infra, uh, but we, like so many other countries, uh, we actually need to work very fast and we need to make sure that we implement rules um, you know, to and, and, and uh, summon people and even bring them to the court if they do not follow the regulations. Uh, you tell them if you want to build this and build that, you must have certain certain amount of OKU parkings. You must have, um, um, you know, washrooms which are uh, accessible in, on every at every floors. You know, you must have uh, ramps. You must have. Um, two-way communication for the deaf in the lift. You must have communication so that the blind can hear in the lift. You must have tactiles. You must make sure that the signages that you do, that you make, is not too much information, not uh, cluttered. It has to have a picture, some information, a picture or a two picture or a three or a four picture with few information. Do not crowd this information because if you see some of the posters that uh, that's out there is just too much information. My friends who are okay, you can be Ajaran, um, you know, um, they have a problem to comprehend. So to your question, Malaysia is improving. I have to say that because I do go out and do um, you know accessible audits, and uh, even with people from IIM, you know, uh, we go out, we go around the country with the different municipalities like. Uh, and the uh, PK, MBSK, um, uh, and, you know, KL, City Centre, PKL. So we, we do go out there, but <clears throat> the rulings must be there. If you don't do that, people will just build buildings not caring about things being accessible. And then later on, they're going to say, Alama, you know, if, uh, if only we had done that, but it's still not too late. You can actually um, go to Human Resource Department and say we would like to make our building and our um, facility um, friendly because we have ten to twenty um, people who are working with us who are PWDs. Um, the you know the compensable manusia, the Human Resource Department, they have a budget for that. So you consult them. Companies can consult them so that you know they will um, you know um, help absorb. Cost, but it's not going to cost anything if you plan it, um, you know, percent. So building owners out there, if you want to build something nice, just don't build something nice. Build something that's nice and also accessible, because then people can come to your place, people can shop, people can can work there. Thank you, Madam Senator. I really like your note on the aging population. As as we know, uh, by twenty thirty, almost more than half of the population will be. It, uh, will be at the age of retirement and, and such. So it's, it's, it's inevitable that, that people will become disabled as they get older. And providing, uh, providing inclusivity for disabled people means providing an insurance for yourself as you get older as well. So uh, some, um, a follow-up question, a follow-up question on, on your notes on on your notes on the bylaws. So I would say that um, in Malaysia, we do have bylaws and also the OPU Act 2008, um, 2008 and forcing, um, uh, probably not enforcing, but saying all of these things regarding uh, regarding inclusivity, discrimination, and all of this. 
but um, like as you say, we do not see a lot of enforcement on it. So in, in the current government, are there any steps towards, uh, towards um, revamping the act itself? Like for example, um, either it is the Act 2008 or the bylaws uh, in Semenanjung, post Semenanjung and Sabah and Sarawak, or, um, and whether they, uh, um, uh, to include enforcement in terms of all of these things? Okay. I need to tell you that um, there are a lot of NGOs, there are a lot of agencies who is working very closely um, to, to make sure that uh, bylaws, uh, you know, are, are, are done up. Uh, but in order for all that to happen, um, we have to make sure uh, that the OKU Act 2008 is boosted up. The OKU Act 2008 needs to be sharpened and needs to be... Um, as you mentioned, um, uh, because it, it doesn't say that, that people don't care. So, uh, and then um, it's very important that we uh, bring this up in Parliament, uh, as well. Um, so as we um, make sure that there is a DASA, um, which um, you know looks into um, 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 reprimanding people um, who um, first, don't um, you know, build things which are accessible, you know, give them a huge penalty or a fine, summon them, you know, uh, put the names, you know, out so that people know and they learn so that next time they will not do it again. They don't build things as badly as, as they please. Second is uh, for us to um, work closely from KPKT and also um, the uh, DBT, the municipalities, um, they need to work together with the OKU. Let me tell you something. People do a lot of things, not just here, but everywhere around the world. They do things, they make decisions without asking us. And that's wrong. You want to do something for persons with disabilities. You need to have them in your council. You need to have them in your ministry. They need to advise you because only then you know what they actually need. You do not assume. So when people assume um, things, if get done, it's not done properly. Um, so if people are going to be wanting to make changes, they would really have to uh, make sure um, that, um, you know, um, they have a disabled person in the meeting, in the decision making, and then only then they know that they have to, um, you know, uh, improve uh, the akta. Only then they know um, that, um, you know, this needs to be done, what needs to be in policy. So if they don't know, they cannot do it. So, uh, like I said, I am lobbying very hard with different, different government agencies. And um, um, you know the, the units or departments uh, that is uh, related or has something, or they want to do something for persons with disability. I'm lobbying and working very hard for them to make them understand. You want to do something for me and my people? You call us. You don't do it on your own. It doesn't work that way. So, yeah, so it's very short and easy. Yes, very. So lift the can sendiri, masuk bako langkat sendiri. You can't because uh, it's just not right. You you need to have someone who is disabled right there. I'll tell you, uh, if you want to do this, if you want to do that, this needs to be done. And then they ask you why, and then you explain. So if you if do if you if you want to do a policy and you want to work on 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 our act, and you don't have us be part of it, you do it just because you want to do it. Uh, that's not right because. Now, to you, it's okay, but in 10 years' time, it's not okay because what you did is because you want to do it because you think you're smart enough. You may be smart, but you don't know what it feels like to be disabled and you don't know the needs of the disabled. So I appreciate um, doctors, uh, nurses, medical practitioners, um, I appreciate people who have been working very hard and studying, um, you know, um, and, and to, to, to assist us and to empower us. 
um, that is the education, you know, from from the uh, uh, aspect of uh, education, um, accessibility, sport, and an athlete, um, you know, um, and um, even um, media. Media plays a very important role. So all this um, can only happen if everybody works together and not um, not just in silos. Thank you, Madam Senator. So basically, to our viewers, don't treat us like welfare, empower us instead. So, yeah. um, so in Malaysia, uh, especially in the government sectors, we have the 1% quota for persons with disabilities. But we have seen that only about three ministries have fulfilled that quota. Um, considering your position as a senator, what seems to be the barrier in fulfilling this government objective? Okay. Um, I have for the last um, few months and of late when um, I started my session in the, uh, at the, uh, in the upper house in parliament, Yuan uh, whenever I see a minister or a deputy minister, I always say, can you please stop for a while? Um, was, is, is it okay for us to chat for a while? And they go, okay. And then I said, listen, I need your help. Um, would it be possible for you to consider to uh, open more job opportunities for us? And then they said, oh, but we do have some disabled people who's working in this. And I said, I have the numbers. You don't have enough. You're not 1% at all. You know, so um, right now, I, 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 again, in order for you to, in order for you to understand and want to see this 1%, you need to make people understand and educate um, that, you know, each of us who are disabled have our uh, different, different abilities. Kita bukan kelainan upaya, kita kurang upaya. What is the not kelainan? Kelainan not Superman. That, yeah, uh, kelainan means that you know I'm an alien, you know. So I'm not an alien. I'm a human being. I have different different abilities. I always tell my friends, our disability is actually our ability. So you just have to polish it. It's like a stone, uh, you know. It, the, the diamond you have to polish so that it'll shine. So um, it is my duty. It is my duty as uh, uh, someone who is representing our community um, to constantly uh, lobby, constantly educate, and constantly uh, push um, our friends to the forefront. Um, but in order for people to give us jobs, one, perception of the people who is interviewing us, the agencies who are interviewing us, has to change. The form. Once we say it's okay, you we don't get the job. So much so that some of our friends don't even put okay you because they know that they'll be rejected. So point of the matter is attitude, um, disability quality training, disability related training is very important so that people understand that each of us have different different capabilities. You know, you don't put this person with this disability. Uh, say, for example, you don't put somebody who's got physical disability uh, like us uh, uh, to do, you know, uh, climb and put boxes up in, 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 in the cover. It's like, you know, a window to, you know, why would you want to do that? So they need to understand the categories and they need to understand that we can do it, but you need to adjust the jobs for us. But again, like I said, first, borang to the form. Please don't discriminate us when we're trying to find this job just because we say we're okay, you and you don't give us a job. Second, attitude is very important for people who are interviewing us and for the agencies uh, to, to, to uh, when they are having okay, you come for interview, they need to know how to speak to us, how to assist us and, and bring out the best in us, okay? Three, the place has to be accessible. If it's not, how can we work there, you know, for, do not discriminate us. All of the people out there will become disabled someday. They forget that. Everybody will become disabled someday. It could be tomorrow, the day after, or in, in, in years to come. So I tell them to have an open heart, open mind, open heart because you really don't know um, what um, the skills are, you know, for, for the people who's gonna come and interview. So, yeah. Thank you, Madam Senator. 
you, Madam Senator. So this will probably be my last question um, to wrap up. Uh, in conclusion, we do have a voice in Parliament and we have the capacity to, to enact change. So what are your upcoming goals to increase accessibility and for issuing the inclusivity of the disabled community in Malaysia? That's, that's one question. And another question to, to follow up on that is that what are your advice to budding, budding, uh, budding activists in the disability, in the disability sphere? Okay. My advice to people who want to go in, uh, into supporting persons with disabilities and caring for persons with disabilities is for these NGOs, please don't do it because you want to make money because that's already a bad start. Do it because you want to assist the best that you can. Do it because you want to empower persons with disability. Do it because you have a big heart and um, you want to make sure that a persons with disability is like everybody else. Uh, you know, you want to do programs for them, uh, you, you want to um, help um, brush their skills so that they can be on their own, uh, so that they can um, be independent. Uh, something very important here that I have to um, highlight is um, you need to have empathy if you want to be an NGO uh, supporting persons with disability. If you don't have that, it's no point. Okay, and another thing is um, you must understand that um, when you speak to somebody who's got different different kinds of disability, you need to understand them how best to speak to them. Okay, for example, I'm in a wheelchair. When you're talking to me, please don't stand up. I have to walk up to you and that hurts my neck. So, you know, you just need to bend down or grab a chair and speak to me at eye level. Because I'm four feet tall, just like a child. So yeah, we need to understand uh, PWDs before we embark into wanting to support them. That's your first, your second question. The first question is, what are some of the things that I will be doing? I want to do what I aspire to in Parliament. A lot. You cannot even begin to imagine. I mean, I sleep at two, three in the morning. I start my day as early seven thirty for my meetings sometimes. Um, I I'm looking after 4.7 million of my friends. I have a big responsibility. Um, I can't sleep at night because I know some of us don't have food to eat. And I also um, bring it upon myself to make sure that none of my friends are left behind. So with the zero reject policy in, in the university, um, I encourage this also, you know, from, from, from school, not discriminate us. Um, I encourage um, um, and I applaud uh, persons with disabilities and also university um, who are giving spaces and not um, looking down on us and giving us the opportunity to learn, you know, and, and be better, you know, than, than we already are. Um, that's on education. Second is on accessibility. I'll be working very closely with um, the uh, different, different um, agencies and also NGOs, um, you know, to make sure that we can improve our accessibility in the country. Third, disabled tourism is very big. Um, if um, and when our country is, you know, um, improving on accessibility, we can get more and more people with disability coming to travel into our country. So that's that's a um, uh, you know that's it's a that's a boost for, for the country economy via um, tourism. And then fourth is, I want to make sure that um, you know uh, my friends are. Are able to work not just in, in, in the government but also in NGOs and also in you know GLCs also in private companies because uh, we work very hard we work three times 300 times more uh, than than able-bodied people so yeah um, I, I I really would like to see that you know um, we, we we are there and we are able to work and, and earn a living and help yeah you know, generate the country's economy. And the next thing is, um, um, I would like to see more disabled people um, in the forefront, uh, not just as frontliners, but also, um, you know, in, in big organizations for them to be on the board so that, uh, you know, we, we also see their ability as in, you know, you know that maybe their scroll that they have or um, their, their, their ability to, to, to uh, have a fair out, 
be able to have a fair argument and to educate and improve things and conditions for persons with disability in whichever ministry or company that they're in. So I have a lot of things to do. I have I want to build training centers to have more sign language interpreters. I I want to, I would like to uh, build uh, more schools with uh, for children who are okay with Mulajara. And I have a son who's 13 and he's autistic for Asperger. So I want to make sure that parents have support. I would like to make sure that um, we are able to uh, have a, a more a big chunk, a bigger chunk for. Um, supporting our friends with rare disease. I would like to be able to uh, be there and support and, and help my friends who have a mental, um, who are okay mental, uh, whether they're bipolar, schizophrenia, be there for them, with them, and support them. So, so many things to say, so many things to do, so little time. Thank you, Madam Senator. As, as everyone knows, if you talk to a person with disabilities, it will be a never-ending never ending conversation about us and about the world itself. So um, a little gift for, every, for our viewers out there, you will be disabled one day. If it's not now, it will be tomorrow. If it's not tomorrow, it will be some other day the next. So by providing, uh, by providing people with disabilities the accommodations that they need now, you are providing yourself in the future. So um, with that, we end this session as well as. Thank you, everyone.